But, I mean, that's my point. You're in the middle of downtown Phoenix. There yeah. were thousands of guns. That's one of the most popular concealed carry states. I've seen the numbers. In fact, it's one of the top states for people carrying firearms concealed. I know I've seen that. So, uh, you know, th that's the issue I'm trying to make here is the police live in a, in a gun world. So they know there's already guns everywhere. They would rather see the rifle, the handgun, out in the open because that means you're in defense. That means I'm out in the open. I'm armed. I'm here to keep the peace as a citizen, as a militiaman. You, you don't go run around in the woods and, and, and worship some, some, some commander, you know, who, uh, tells you, you know, how great Hitler is. He's probably a federal officer. That's not being in the militia. Being in the militia is doing what you did out there openly. And so, again, this is a shift, a paradigm shift that's happening to where I didn't even recognize the paradigm shift. I know about concealed carry, but uh, I mean about open carry, but when, and I've talked about how important it is, but when I got reports, guy with an earpiece out there with a gun, I immediately thought provocateur because I didn't even gauge the amount of courage to go to a presidential event and do it. The boldness of it, I wasn't even ready to deal with. And there's still, we still need to look out for groups and people and, you know, I mean, you know, there are a lot of covert agendas going on, and it's all very complex, and, and the enemy is very, very treacherous. Uh, but uh, this is just so exciting uh, what's happening. And, again, a free man would have his sword or his rifle openly on him. It's the criminals, the murderers. What police, even 50 years ago, 100 years ago, were looking for was somebody with a hidden weapon. The bad guys have it hidden. That was the rule. The good guys have it in the open. You have your weapon out in the open. But, see, they made it out of style, uncool to carry. That's why in the famous Lindbergh trial, you know, everybody, you can watch the newsreels, had their guns in the front row, you know, and, and, and people were saying, well, how can you let Lindbergh in? He may shoot the guy that kidnapped the baby. But, but the, you know, but the issue was we've gone from guns in court to my dad just... 40 years ago, or I guess like 42 years ago, in college, I mean in high school, just taking a shotgun in and putting it in his locker to, oh my God, you know, the, the schools are now little prisons so that the shooter can come there knowing that no one will stand up to him. Yeah. That was a 10 minute rant, I apologize. <laughs> Well, listen. Tell me more about the Phoenix Police. Uh, so, so like, so, uh, that's a good headline for us. Phoenix Police told Chris, told uh, you know, you know, uh, open carry demonstrator at Obama event that they supported you. What else did they say? That was about it. I mean, that was everything. Uh, just that they were just there to keep the peace, and they had no problem with what we were doing, and that's it. And of course, there were other guys. Did you know the other guys that were out there armed? Uh, just, I, uh, was acquainted, kind of loosely acquaint, acquainted with, with the other people. Just a few, just like three or four other people there. And the police didn't pull anybody over, follow them home, or no, none of that? Not at all. They didn't even, they didn't even ask for anyone's information. Nothing. I didn't even have any identification on me. I had purposely left cell phone, keys, ID, <sighs> everything at home. Now, now, look at England. First, they say we're going to line everybody up and ask you questions. This happened to me. This happened to both the Watson brothers who live there. It happens to their parents. It happens to everybody now. They just go, excuse me, line up, checking IDs. Thank you. Are oh, you a terrorist? Are oh, you a pedophile? Oh, you... And I had the Wall Street Journal writer here. That happened to her repeatedly when she was in England doing a story about uh, uh, tourism. I mean, it's just everywhere. And now under the TSA model from... The uh, airports, they admit that airport model of being searched, submitting, the act of uh, prostration, taking your shoes off, the act of submitting, the act of being. You know, th this is all about training us to where you're not even nervous now. If you fly a lot, you're like, no big deal, going to the checkpoint, you're not nervous. They're pleased by that. Ah, the, the enslavement is going well. Comments on that. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. A good example of that is uh, there's a Border Patrol checkpoint in, uh, I think it's between between Gila Bend and it's, it's, it's just west of Gila Bend, I believe. And it's, I think it's like 60 or 70 miles away from the border. And uh, my pastor, uh, Baptist pastor, actually got beat up by the Border Patrol at that, at that checkpoint, which has nothing to do with the border. It doesn't even run north and south. 
And all they do is just ask you whether you're a citizen or not. And I believe that this checkpoint, the only purpose of it is to get us used to stopping throughout our daily lives and answering questions to federal agents. And, uh, yeah, so I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, it's been documented, as you know. They just wave the illegals through. But they see a family of, of Americans, black, white, Hispanic. It's like, we're going to have one hell of a time today, boy. <laughs> going to teach them how to be slaves. Now I'm starting to get a clear picture. You go to Pastor Anderson's church, I see. Yeah, yeah, yes, I do. Proudly. I think it's the best church in the world. So more and uh, more and more, he's the pastor beat up within an inch of his life for just asking the, 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 the lordships. How is that going with him right now? Uh, it's just a circus. The court, the whole, the court process is just a total circus, and uh, I couldn't even begin to explain the, the, how ludicrous it is. Well, this has been an amazing uh, interview, and I appreciate you spending time with us today. And I look forward to having you back on uh, as this develops and as this unfolds. And uh, we just appreciate uh, you. Chris, and your courage doing this uh, and just shows how one person can change the world. The guy in New Hampshire starts it. It spreads to Arizona. Now people all over the country are doing open carry. And the illusion, the grip of enslavement is loosening. But the enemy is getting ready to counter strike against all of us. So pray for Chris. Pray for myself. Pray for my whole crew. Pray for what we're doing because I didn't spend any time on it today. But the enemy's coming after us at every level. I have felt a disturbance in the force as well. So we'll see you back live tomorrow. Retransmission starts now. Thank you so much, Chris. No problem. Thanks, Alex. Take care, buddy. It's great to be real, great to be alive, great to be part of the second American Revolution to restore the Republic. Homegain.com.